Hi, my name is Mahmoud Mohammed Said Abdullah. I work as assistant lecturer uh, at Asyut University College of Education, Egypt. I'm currently doing my PhD in Education, TESOL, TEFL, or English Teaching at the Graduate School of Education, University of Exeter, uh, England, UK. And I'd like to talk about the approach or the educational research approach I'm using in my study, which sounds confusing to people sometimes. I'm using DBR or design-based research, which many researchers nowadays employ as alternative to the experimental design, or to other approaches like action research, uh, interpretivist research, or sometimes positive paradigms or uh, approaches. So, first of all, we want to know what that DBR or design-based research. The first thing to you know, for me, as a person who was involved in design based research based on my supervisor's suggestion, uh, the, the link that I think is useful and makes one able to access other useful links or resources is the design based research collective courses or many um, definitions of the stuff related to design based research. My idea is not to um, take you deeper into design-based research because this is not my job since I'm the, 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 the paradigm or the emerging, this new emerging paradigm or new model is completely new, new for me as well. Rather, my purpose is to uh, share with you my experience as related to design-based research and why I resorted to this approach using it as an alternative to the familiar experimental design which is completely dominant in my country, in Egypt. So, let's uh, explore together what a design-based research is and what is the definition that we can uh, phrase for design-based research to describe it and say uh, and distinguish this design from other designs or this paradigm uh, from other paradigms. Just bear with me. Let's now talk about design-based research as we approach it and as we have delineated in our paper. Um, design-based research is a new approach in which there is a growing interest, especially in the area of educational technology or ICT, information and communication technologies, where it emerged. Um, as far as the two main traditions of educational inquiry are concerned, I mean qualitative versus uh, quantitative paradigms, or positivist versus interpretivist paradigm, design-based research is neither completely positivist or scientific paradigm nor is it a completely interpretivist or um, a qualitative paradigm instead it draws on a pragmatic orientation towards reality since it is concerned with what works in reality and is concerned with addressing some research questions or some research objectives for which there are no ready-made solutions and therefore it is called a pragmatic approach. There is an interesting question to ask since we are currently witnessing an emerging interest in this uh, design-based research which we can call educational design-based research to distinguish or to um, make a discrepancy between it and other um, approaches um, uh, in engineering or photography or whatever. So we call it educational design research. Why is there a growing tendency nowadays to employ an approach into educational inquiry? Does this mean that the existing paradigms being used in educational inquiry are sometimes inadequate for addressing the current problems or the specific types 
of these complicated problems which we are encountering in education nowadays? Is it a better alternative at all? If it is um, used properly? Or does it mean that we really need to apply a paradigm that has proven to be successful in other disciplines? And this raises again and again the uh, argument by Richard Pring in his book Philosophy of Educational Research. Uh, his first chapter in which he argued that currently educational research is losing ground and that there is no credibility and that um, government, governments or uh, policy makers uh, lose trust in educational research and lose interest in funding educational research. Pring's main argument is that educational research has sometimes failed to address real problems as they appear in practice, and therefore it is lagging behind compared with other fields like engineering, medicine, uh, in which they present evidence-based uh, solution or evidence-based uh, outcomes or results. Um, there is no easy answer. But the concern here is not to provide a clear-cut answers. Uh, this needs deeper uh, investigation into this approach or into uh, the edu educational research area in general by main figures in the field. Rather, we are concerned about how we can use design-based research to solve something that appeared in reality and employ it in real messy situations that uh, or for which the experimental design is not the good solution. Experimental the experimental design nowadays is sometimes neglected or sometimes um, accused of being completely quantitative and uh, that it mimics the physical sciences. Uh, we need to find an alternative to this experimental design. Rather than treating the social phenomena and extract or reducing it into something that is um, completely measurable, we need to prototype it or to uh, approach it from a developmental approach that recognizes the messy nature of the learning teaching or teaching learning process. We need to explore more the learning process without presupposing some theories or models from the beginning. We need rather to treat the messy context, the messy situation, and suggest some solutions that can sort out real problems as they occur in reality. This is the core of design-based research or design research as it's sometimes called, or educational design-based research. Design, re uh, design research or design-based research in this sense means that we have a problem or uh, we have some questions, research questions, and we need to refine uh, some preliminary designs or some preliminary solutions which are or which can be suggested based on preliminary data collection or data analysis. We need to refine uh, a design framework or design theory while we are interacting with reality to produce some new design principles or design framework or design theory based on interaction. Contrary to experimental design in which we uh, uh, make some kind of pre-post testing or uh, measurable interference in reality or quantifiable uh, statistical results at the end uh, and this in one go only, a single experiment design-based research means uh, prototyping the design itself to check which weaknesses exist treat them in next designs or in future designs. For example, suppose that I have an internet-based program that I want to experiment 
uh, in reality to resolve some kind of linguistic issue or um, a communicative issue in English. Uh, based on uh, our pre preliminary experimentation in reality with real students, we discovered that this design is not 100% workable in reality. There are some weaknesses that need to be addressed by um, future uh, improved designs or future improved design framework that can be uh, carried on or carried with the same uh, carried on in the same context. This way, we are developing the design through characterizing the context itself. We are not going to the context, check how it works and then come back again with some quantifiable measure, measurements or some kind of um, statistical results. No, we don't need that. We need to go deeper into the context using this design to discover what's beyond any statistical or any measurable findings. This is what we approach, this how we approach design based or educational design based research. The main question here is whether design based research is workable for PhD students. A strong argument against design based research or educational design based research is that it is not applicable in PhD studies. I myself as a PhD student used it and it was working. The point is that we need some kind of adapted version or flexible version of design based research to make it workable for any PhD student who is intending to use this design or who has a complicated problem that cannot be addressed by action research or by um, experimental design or by uh, any other kind of survey research. The point here is that design-based research can work really for PhD students. If we uh, make it a little bit concise or flexible or adaptable, we don't need to, for example, take years in a prototyping phase. Instead, we can take few months or ma at maximum, a year at maximum, and then uh, phrase our um, or construct our final design framework, which is not final in the general sense, but it's final for the study itself uh, as a research limitation. But for us, it's open for researchers in the future to carry on with it and revi revise it, experiment it, and revise and repeat these cycles till they reach a satisfactory design. This is how we approach design-based research in PhD, PhD studies. Thank you for that and hope that this was helpful. Thank you.